Hi, my name is Ilma, and today I'd like to share Psalm 104, verse 1 to 4. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You're clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a cloak. Stretching out heavens like a tent curtain, he lays the beams of his upper chamber in the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He walks on the wings of the wind. He makes the winds his messenger, flaming fire his ministers. Psalm 104, 1-4. Here's my devotional. Cover yourself with light as with cloak. According to a commentary, bless the Lord, O my soul, is repeated three times in the previous psalm. This praise is a call to worship God in spirit and in truth, and to do so from one's inmost being. Barak is the Hebrew word for bless, and it means to kneel as seen in Genesis 24 verse 11. However, when written in the peel form, it means to slow, sorry, to show respect as seen in Genesis 1, 12 verse 2. When the psalmist says this, he means to give praise to God. Sadly, many of us today do not know how to worship God in spirit and in truth. We worship Him according to our limited minds, which may have been corrupted by religion and otherworldly system. And during war that Khan comments that the psalmist worship Yahweh as his God, and as a great one who is clothed with honor and majesty. The idol gods of the nations were often described as crude and shameful in their conduct. But God, Yahweh, the covenant God of Israel, is known for his honor and majesty. God's honor and majesty are as apparent as a person's clothing, and so is the light, like purity of his being. Just as the creation in Genesis begins with describing the creation of light, so the psalmist first mentions light. In verse 2, God's honor and, ma and majesty are as apparent as a person's clothing, and so is the light, like purity of his being. Uh, so, as uh, the psalmist uh, mentions Genesis in this, in this light, creation of light, uh, First Timothy 6.16, which says, God dwells in unapproachable light. Perhaps this is another description or allusion to light as a garment. Spurgeon comments, if light itself is but his garment and veil, what must be the blazing splendor of his own essential being? We are lost in astonishment and dare not to pry into the mystery, lest we be blinded by its un insufferable glory. Reflection. How can we cover ourselves with God's light? And how can we worship God in spirit and in truth? To cover ourselves with God's light, we need to have been out of darkness. So there's a verse that says that God has uh, led you out of darkness into the light. So when we are not clothed with light, we are corrupted. We are walking in the flesh. We are following all the... A worldly system. We are not able to be as holy as God wants us to be. Um, when we become believers, we are given that opportunity to be holy as He is holy. He says that in one of His words, I am God and I am holy and you are ought to be holy. So when we are um, reacting and 
not responding to God's will and we are uh, being so focused on the world and distracted by all the things that belongs to this world then we are not covering ourselves with God's light. So how can we worship God in spirit and in truth? This is a very, very uh, misunderstood uh, verse because I think people just want to worship God the way they want to worship Him. Um, and that is not... God commands us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And what does that mean? Uh, we are spirit beings. We are not just physical beings. So we have a spirit, and, and, and in our spirit is where we can worship God. We don't just worship God in lips by saying things. We don't just worship God by showing others that we are holy or that well, we are following a ritual or a practice or a tradition. But to worship God in spirit is to have His presence in your life, to be united with Him, to be one in His thinking, one in His will, one in His laws, one in His uh, character. So what about truth? How, how do we worship God in truth? We worship God in truth when we soak ourselves into the truth that only comes from God's Word because that's the only way we will know what God wants us to do. And so if we are not in truth, if we believe lies, if we constantly um, be, uh, believe in our own understanding, depend on our own understanding to decipher things, then we are not worshiping God in truth. So for us to be able to worship God in spirit and in truth, we must have that love to know His kingdom, love to know His will, love to know His word. And love to live that word into your life and follow all the things that he says. So that's the only way you can cover yourself with light as with a cloak, as this uh, psalmist is saying. Thanks for watching. I hope you check my website at ilmaarts.com for artworks and photographs. And I hope you subscribe to my channel on YouTube so I could make more videos for the Lord. Thanks for watching.